Hey, what you guys think of that band? That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Taylor Parks band. Well, you guys drove a long ways. <laughs> All right, guys. Coming up lighting. next. Let's see what. So you guys get to get some information. <laughs> Stevie Williams coming up. Shit. So. Uh, okay, we're gonna give it to Steve. Steve's gonna have a good old time. Here you go, Steve, man. Hello, Portland. Hello, Hillstar. Hey. Tell you who I am. I and Steve Elliott. I write about cannabis. I wrote something called the Little Black Book of Marijuana back in 2011. Second edition came out last year. If you want to check out a complete history of the relationship between the human species and the cannabis plant, that's a good place to start. It's a short read. It's just 20,000 words. You might learn something. I also write for Hemp News. I write for Northwest Leaf. I write for Dope Magazine. And I write for Tokesignals.com. Okay, enough about me. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about a love story. Let's talk about a love story between a human species and a plant. This love story started at least 12,000 years ago, according to the best archaeological evidence we have. It may have happened when one of our great, 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 great grandfathers came into the cave and he threw a hemp plant on the fire. He thought, okay, we're going to stay warm tonight. Well, they not only stayed warm that night, they got toasted. And they remembered how they got that way. They went back and they got them another hemp plant the next day and another one the next day, and pretty soon, they figured out that there was a special relationship going here. And I'll tell you more about this love story. Here's what makes our relationship with this hemp plant, with this cannabis plant, so very special, ladies and gentlemen. The hemp plant responds to our needs. The cannabis plant evolves along with the human species. It co-evolves with us. The intimate relationship between these two species is so close that we, each of us have in our brains and distributed throughout our bodies cannabinoid receptors. We manufacture our own cannabinoids. They're such an essential part of human health. Well, this plant has evolved phytocannabinoids, that is plant-derived cannabinoids with which we can supplement our endocannabinoid system. Modern medical science is just now starting to catch up with the importance of the endocannabinoid system to human health. One reason it is so important, beyond the palliative properties, that most of us know, and palliative means that it helps you feel better. Almost anybody who smokes pot or has medibles knows that. Well, beyond those palliative properties, cannabis has curative properties. We know that some conditions can be completely cured by cannabis. Not only that, but cannabis has a property that we would call homeostasis. The human organism needs a tune-up from time to time not just physically, but psychologically. Cannabis helps us with that homeostasis. Homeostasis is a balance of mind and body. Homeostasis is the prevalence of positive emotions. Homeostasis is feeling fulfilled in your life. Homeostasis is being fully present in your life with your family, with your friends, with your loved ones to an extent that might not be possible otherwise. That's one reason that this plan is so important to those of us who face health issues. That's one reason it's so important for those of us who have chronic pain. Cannabis, and this is crucial, represents a way that you can medicate for chronic pain without further damaging your body, without further hurting your already challenged liver. Cannabis is non-toxic, and Woo! it has these effects without the harmful effects of Big Pharma's products. Big Pharma is more than happy to sell you Vicodin, Oxycontin, all of those pain drugs. Your doctor is more than happy to prescribe them. What he won't be telling you about is that Bermuda vacation that that pharmaceutical company buys him for prescribing so many of our products. If he prescribes so many per month, he might be going to the Hawaii or Azores or wherever the hell doctors want to go these days. I don't know, I don't keep up with that because I don't take their pharmaceuticals. Yeah. I don't think you should either. I'm not telling you what to do, but maybe if you want to look into the comparative effects of opioid medications and of cannabis, you're gonna see what I'm talking about. Not only that, but cannabis means that you're gonna be present in your life with your family. What kind of a price can you put on that? And as long as I'm talking about prices, I think it's important to say that people's mental and physical health are more important than corporate profits. This 12,000 year love story between the human species and the cannabis plant needs to continue. We don't need a middleman between us and this plant. We need the direct connection to this plant that is represented by growing our own. 
by being self-sufficient, by providing our own medicine. Think about what kind of empowerment that represents. Yeah. You don't have to go to Big Pharma for your medicine. You don't have to go to Big Pharma to cure yourself. You can grow your own medicine. You can have your own personal relationship with this cannabis plant. You can write the next chapter of this 12,000 year love story. You can become part of a revolution that is quietly happening one mind at a time. Cannabis is going to take us to the next level of human evolution. Just as it has co-evolved with us to this point, it's going to co-evolve with us to the next point. And folks, we ain't done yet. Woo! Look around you, look at the shape the world is in. We can do better than this. We can have a more we can have a more constructive relationship with the environment. We don't have to damage it for the sake of oil. We don't have to damage it for the sake of corporate profits. We can replace plastics. We can replace oil. We can replace pharmaceuticals with cannabis and mom and pop can grow this cannabis. It doesn't have to be some big corporation. Let me tell you, you don't have to go to corporations for your daily needs, ladies and gentlemen. You can get around those guys. That's what scares Big Pharma about cannabis. Yeah. That's what scares the industrial corrections complex about cannabis. How many people do you think would be in prison today if they took the drug laws off the books? It's gonna be a lot different story once we have a sane government and a sane way of dealing with these things. Yeah. Let me tell you, cannabis can replace conventional oil. Cannabis can be food, fuel, and fiber. We don't even need the petrochemical industry anymore, ladies and gentlemen. All of that can be replaced with better efficiency and lower cost with cannabis hemp seed-based fuels. That's what scares the big oil companies about cannabis. Now, when you've got these corporations scared of something happening, they're going to do all they can to keep it from happening. What is a corporation about? A corporation is about one thing, that's bottom line profits. A corporation has no conscience. A corporation has no soul. A corporation doesn't care about your health, ladies and gentlemen. It cares about you paying them money. It cares about their profits. A corporation is responsible only to its stockholders. Now that, to me, doesn't mean that you're putting patients above profits. That's a backwards way to do things. We gotta change that. Patients' lives, patients' health is more important than money in anybody's pocket. Now I know that there's a lot of money about to be made in cannabis. Right here in Oregon, there's a lot of excitement in the air because starting October 1st, you can go to a recreational store and buy legal weed. They only let you buy seven grams, so that's kind of silly. But you can also buy clones, you can buy seeds. So that's way the hell better than it used to be. Yeah. Now, can we make it better than that? Yes, we can. We're gonna to continue to improve it. We're not going to let any corporation step between us and this plan. I'm talking about a 12,000 year love story that you can't let corporate America fuck up for you. Woo! Yeah, I get going and I, I do get going. Woo! Let me tell you, this is important stuff because not only your personal health as a human being, mental and physical, but the health of this society depends on it. True. Ladies and gentlemen, the health of this planet depends on it. These corporate toxins from oil, from pharmaceuticals, the kind of mental toxins introduced into our system by the corrections industrial complex, the practice of locking human beings in cages for marijuana. I don't want to be part of any such barbarity. I think it's time that we end this practice of locking anybody in a cage for a plant. Yes! Yeah. Now, if you are like me, are ready to change the world, all we gotta do is believe we can do it, because I can tell you, you miss every shot you don't take, ladies and gentlemen. We gotta get out there and we gotta speak the truth about cannabis. We gotta speak it loud and clear and we're not gonna stop speaking the truth about it until the truth is accepted. We're not there yet. We got corporate America and they see profits right now. What they're gonna try to do is take cannabis down to schedule two. That means they still have control. That means the money you pay for cannabis is still going to big pharma. It's going to corporate profits. It's not going to mom and pop anymore. When they tell you how dangerous cannabis is, how unregulated medical marijuana is, that feeling you get is their hand in your pocket because they want all the money yeah, from it. Yeah. They're gonna say any of it is dangerous <laughs> except that you buy from them. Well, let me tell you, we had a mom and pop industry for 20 years now, 19 years in California. Woo! We've had a mom and pop industry for 17 years up in Washington, 17 years here in Oregon. Yeah. Nobody gets hurt. As long as you have an ethical community, a community that cares about each other, we're not going to poison each other, and that's the reason it's never happened yet. True. You bring in corporate America, and they have their eyes only on the profits. If they care only about the money, they're not looking out for you anymore. You got to remember who your friends were this whole time, who got us to this point. What you can't let happen 
is one team carrying the ball down to the five yard line and then these corporate guys picking it up and running it onto the end zone after we made it easy and saying, look what we did for you. Let me tell you, legal cannabis is not a gift to you from corporate America. We had to do it over their heads. We had to basically kick their asses at the polls to make it happen. So don't you think they're going to suddenly come along and be okay with you still controlling your relationship with this plant? It's time for you to empower yourselves, empower yourselves with knowledge, empower yourselves by refusing to settle for anything less than a personal relationship where you grow this plant, where you control your medicine. Each of us who have medical conditions can find a strain that helps the most. Once you tune into that strain you need, you can grow exactly what you want. You can experiment with interbreeding different strains. You can become part of this exciting 12,000 year experiment that we are running with cannabis where we increase the level of communication between us and the plant. If you don't think plants can communicate with you, then you must not smoke pot because what do you think happens every time you get high? That plant is saying, thank you. Thank you for growing me. Thank you for letting me exist. Here's your reward. And I'll tell you something else. It may be hippie talk, but I do some breeding with yeah. cannabis. And once you see the plant for breeding, there's a different high too. There's a fulfilled karma to that high. And it's important that beyond cloning, which is important, that we also continue to carry on the genetic legacy of this wonderful plant through interbreeding and through seeds. So by the time we reach a future where every man and woman in this country has access to the cannabis they want, the cannabis they need, by the time that we reach a society where patients health and their relationships with life and with each other are considered more important than in corporate profits, then I won't complain about anybody making money off cannabis. It's a noble way to make money. When you bring medicine to people who need it, you're bringing the world a lot of good. Don't forget that we have to keep these politicians honest. We have to keep our eye on these corporations. We have to stick together as a community and remember how we got here. I thank you all very much for showing up today. And remember, we are going to change the world.